When your parents told you to sit straight again, it would have been better if you didn't listen, at least when it comes to your posture on your motorcycle and not at the dining table. How you sit not only affects how easily you can handle the motorcycle, but also its performance and, at least in theory, the top speed of your motorcycle. When you're riding, there are resistance forces acting against you. Otherwise, you wouldn't need any power at all to get your motorcycle moving. When these resistance forces have the same amount as the force of the bike's engine, it won't accelerate any further. Meaning, when you still want to accelerate or to ride an ascending street with the same velocity, the engine's power has to overcome the resistance forces. But when the power of the engine is limited, the only thing you can do is reducing the resistance forces. Let's have a closer look at them. There are four common types of driving resistance forces. Rolling resistance, air resistance, gradient resistance and acceleration resistance. The last two don't occur when you're riding at a constant speed on a plain road. As the name says, acceleration resistance is the force which occurs when you want to accelerate. Gradient resistance is the force you have to overcome when riding an ascending street. The rolling resistance force does always occur, no matter how fast you ride. It mostly depends on your tires, your tires pressure and the weight of your motorcycle plus the rider. We can assume that this force is about 2% of the motorcycle's weight force meaning that if a motorcycle weighs 210 kg and the rider on it weighs 90 kg with his or her equipment, then the rolling resistance force would be around 60 Newton. Air resistance force can be experienced because of air pressing against you when you ride. Especially naked bike or super motor riders may know this from higher speeds. And when it comes to the top speed or the performance of a motorcycle, air resistance force has a way higher influence than the rolling resistance force. But why? The rolling resistance force stays exactly the same, no matter how fast you're riding. It only depends on the just explained factors, which were tire, tire pressure and weight. But air resistance changes with velocity. It depends on many different factors, some of which can change dramatically during your ride. To make this clear, I'll show you the formula and we go over the different parts of it. With this formula, it's quite obvious which aspects have an impact on the air resistance force. CD, for example, is the drag coefficient. It's influenced by the shape of the motorcycle and by the fairing, if the motorcycle has one. A is the frontal area of the motorcycle. Rho is the air density. In the formula, it's always divided by two because of math. In a normal atmosphere, the air density usually has a value around 1.2 kg per cubic meter. And now for the reason that air resistance increases drastically with driving faster. Velocity appears squared, so doubling the velocity quadruples the air resistance force. Now the mission is to reduce the resistance forces for either a theoretical increase in the top speed or an increase of performance when accelerating at lower speeds. Which part of the formula can we change for that? We can't change the air densities. I mean, of course, you could drive at higher altitudes, which would reduce the air density, but then this would also affect the combustion process and the motorcycle engine's power output. But if you were driving an electric motorcycle, we can't change the air density, so we'll have to look at the other factors. What can we do to have an impact on them? Sit differently? Yes, but before we make an estimation about how big the impact of your seating position can be, I'll explain why it has an impact at all. On a sport bike, you will see the biggest effect of seating position. When driving fast, you usually lean down onto the tank and kind of hide behind the windshield. By doing that, you decrease two things. The frontal area A of your motorcycle, because not as much of your upper body needs to face the wind anymore, and two, the drag coefficient. Usually, smoother surfaces and shapes like the fairing on a sport bike bring a lower drag coefficient with them. A body facing the air on top of a motorcycle isn't smooth at all, on the other hand. Now, let's calculate an example situation 
in which we want to increase the top speed by leaning down onto the tank instead of sitting upright. Quick reminder, this is all just theoretical. In reality, we got some other influences and many motorcycles got, for example, a limiter for the top speed in the software, in which case these motorcycles wouldn't reach their actual top speed anyway, no matter how the rider sits on them. The other thing is, we don't know exactly how much we can decrease the frontal area or the drag coefficient of the motorcycle by leaning down, since we usually don't have a wind tunnel in our backyard. That's why we will use some reference points found in literature. Let's take two example values from what I found in literature. The surface A multiplied with the drag coefficient would be around 0.45 when the driver is sitting straight on a sport bike. When the driver is leaning down, the surface A multiplied with the drag coefficient would decrease to 0.3. The average sport bike of this example would have the following characteristics. A mass of 200 kg, a power output of 70 kW, the A multiplied with the drag coefficient I just told you for the lying driver and the sitting driver, and the air density would be our usual 1.2 kg per cubic meter. Now we want to find out by how much we can increase the top speed by lying down. Here we got our two formulas. First the formula for the air resistance force and second the formula for the power of the motorcycle. This formula is the power equals the force multiplied with the velocity. Then we put the two formulas together, do some math and put the velocity to one side. And then we plug in the values for the case with the upright sitting rider. And we get the following result. The rider would reach a top speed of 229 km per hour. Now we plug the values for a lying rider into the formula and we get the following result. This time the rider would get to a top speed of around 262 km per hour. So in theory, with our theoretical sport bike, the top speed would be increased by 33 km per hour. Now that you know how the seating position can influence the air resistance force and therefore also the top speed of a motorcycle, here's a little fun fact about the video itself. A bit more than one year ago, I uploaded my first YouTube video on this channel and it was about exactly the same topic. Since I think the first video wasn't really good and I learned a lot about video making in the past year, I decided to do another video about the same topic and here it is. I've linked the old video in the description if you want to know how I did it one year ago. 